We're back talking about using ketamine infusions for treatment-resistant depression. I would like to welcome psychiatrist Dr. Shala Modir to the show. When you started hearing about ketamine infusion clinics, what was your first reaction as a practicing psychiatrist? Well, my first reaction is I was actually really excited that there might be an option that is different than what we've been doing up to date. But what happened with the research has shown that the effect of ketamine lasts about seven days and then starts to wear off. And even in the repeat infusion model that was done, where they did three infusions a week over the course of two weeks, the effect size was lasting about 18 days. So I think it's a great model for beginning to augment somebody's treatment, but it's not an end-all solution, and it's not a substitute for the overall treatment of depression. I have 160 people, many of whom have had infusions over a year ago, who are not depressed. And I think it's amazing that you have like your own population of people that you can gather evidence from, but it's very different than collecting like what the data shows in an evidence-based model that doesn't support what you've seen. But that doesn't mean that at some point, maybe the research will catch up with what you've done, but at this point, it hasn't. And so there's a really large risk of when a person who has severe depression, their mood drops out severely. It could be really dangerous. And I think, you know, believe it or not, the two of you are probably not that far off in your opinions. Right. What I love about you, Dr. Mandel, is you're taking something that's relatively new, but you're very open and honest about it. And even you are willing to admit that anytime there's a new treatment, you know what? There's a lot of frauds out there. So if someone wanted to even look into doing this, how could you figure out if a clinic might be operating unethically since there is no... You know, th this is new. This is this is yeah, the Wild not West. Yeah, established standard of care at this point, right? So, as far as like, how should the anesthesiologist interact with the psychiatrist and the treatment team, and when the effect is wearing off in seven days, like, what's the protocol for how we're going to maintain safety to make sure somebody doesn't get suicidal if right. the effect wears off? We don't even know if it's safe to use with traditional antidepressants and antipsychotics and lithium because most of the research that was done, people were not on any other medication. But that's not what happened is happening on the outside, right? On the outside, people are coming in on multiple different antidepressants, usually three or some combination of different medications while they get their infusions. So we don't really know the safety of that. The that's why it's scary. That. It's exciting. It's scary. Right. A lot, you know, and we have to continue to study this. And, you know, Dr. Mendel, again, obviously, Julie went to you because you, you've had more experience with this than most others. Oh, yeah. But before we go, just in terms of that alone, <clears throat> do no harm, what can people do to protect themselves so that they are not put in a dangerous situation with, with these unethical clinics? They can go to a place where safety and effectiveness are paramount. They can go to a place where there is real monitoring by a physician and a nurse. We're talking about intravenous ketamine given as an infusion. There are people putting skin patches yeah, on. Right. There are people giving IM injections. There are people giving nasal. I'm not endorsing that in any way. This works. Ketamine by really deliberate intravenous infusion with good monitoring. It works. Well, that's why we love featuring these treatments on our show because, as with any new treatment, there's going to be positives, negatives, right. confusion. Julie, more, more than anything, we just want you to get well. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank for you. Being with us.